to be handling the questions from everyone and also a few questions that we also that I also have for you. So the first question, I think I want to go straight to it. Um, these days we have a lot of micro and medium sized business owners that conduct business solely on their phones, WhatsApp, Instagram, etc. So how do you think people like that can implement process automation? So, okay, so the question, uh, what I would like to ask is, so what exactly are they doing on their phone? I was speaking to a group of businesses that run their business on WhatsApp and all of that. And I asked one of them, like, do you even know the people that have ordered from you? She said, yes, yes, she can get them. I was like, okay, so how do you get about them? She has to look through our chats. She has to look through our chat and see the people that chatted her business accounts. And she has to do all of that. Then I asked her, that, okay, so if you have new products, do you even know which of your former customers you can push this to? Okay, so if I sell something today and I have something that is complementary to it, maybe I sold a bag today and now that I have new stock, I have a shoe that is very, very complementary to the bag you bought. How do I even know that, ah, this person, like, I won't even remember the person that bought the bag. I'll just be there thinking, ah, the person that bought that bag would have bought this shoe. But then there is no record. So when you're running business, it's WhatsApp is good for advertisement. Instagram is good for advertisement. Facebook is good for advertisement. But please, WhatsApp is not your shop. That's not where you run your business. I know that, yes, we all run online businesses today, but those, what are the things that are important? So getting your customer data, how do you do? How are you going to do it on WhatsApp? Getting, knowing the orders that your customers have ordered. You know, there are even times that orders, inquiries from customers would be lost in a host of other messages you have on your WhatsApp. Inquiries from customers that might even be converted will be lost in it. So as for me, I'd say that running, conducting business solely on WhatsApp, Instagram, it is, that is just a form of advertisement. That is not where you run your business. That is not where, where you keep your records. WhatsApp does not keep any records for us. That is not where you keep your records. And thank God, people, even people on Instagram now, they will put links on their pages that, like, okay, so if you want to order, click the link in the bar. Because by the time you click that link, they get some information from you that they can always go back to. At least, even if, if I'll call that semi-manual, they have it in place, or let me say semi-automated, like in the app full thinking. Let me say semi-automated. But they have something in place that they are getting the data from. So if they need data about the customer, they have something to go back to. But absolutely, working, running business on WhatsApp and Instagram is just for the purpose of advertisement. It's not for the purpose of your operation. There should be an operation backing up your WhatsApp. There should be, some, there should be something else backing up your presence on Instagram. Okay, so um, to audience questions, um, what is the role of process managers, i.e. the people on the job in, the, in process improvement? As a business owner, do I have to involve them always? Yes, you should. As a business owner, you should involve them always. Actually, as a business owner, you're meant to delegate things. So this is another thing I teach business owners. You're not meant to be working in your business. You're supposed to be working on your business. And that is, that is where delegation comes into play. So delegate the things that has to be delegated. So if you have a process manager, if you have a process analyst, if you have a process officer in your business, I don't know why you still be doing the one reviewing the process. So why exactly are you paying the process person? So as a business owner, face the strategy, face the um, thinking, like think about how you position your business better. Think about how you 
how you can be as far with your competitors leave the process person to deal with the processes so it's not like you're leaving them they don't know what to do or you're not involved at all it's not abdication it is delegation let them do it then you give an oversight so please yes as a business owner if you want to do anything that has to do with process if you are if you're able to finance it if you're able to afford it you need someone that's what the person does what the person thinks eats drink is process because another thing is as business owners our your judgment is always very impaired like i'm a process person and i know that when i make recommendations to my stakeholders they just look at me like that what are you even thinking like, what's the meaning of this this is this is this thing has been working this thing has been working and i start running around to look for data to show them that it can actually be better because on the surface of it they might not even see it that it's not good but when i present my data and they're like okay what you're saying makes sense it makes a lot of sense let's give it a shot so please you need to separate the functions so that you are not impaired with your own thoughts. You are not, you are not impaired with, you, you can't stay in both positions, basically. You can't stay in both positions. So that I want you to be very, very objective so you won't stay in both positions. We have so many questions that I think we'll end up having to send answers to people um after this so i'm going to ask one more question for now which is um how do small companies cope especially when their net profits will not be able to accommodate the additional cost of automation especially the ones that come with monthly or yearly subscriptions okay so that's where i said start I said it earlier that you should start small. So there, are, okay, so I will use inventory management, inventory management as an example. You know that there are some applications you can buy of the share that will manage inventory for you and you have to be paying like monthly subscription or yearly subscription. But you know as well that if you get someone that is very good in Excel, the person can design a very good and efficient Excel template for you that will manage the inventory very well too. Yes, there will be restrictions because you will not be you might not be able to, in fact, you will not be able to integrate with some other things that the bigger application would have given you. But here, what we are talking about is opportunity cost. What exactly do you need? Okay, so the bigger application, apart from the inventory part of it, are there other functionalities on that application that is very, very, very important? Or you just want to get it because it is able to manage the inventory process very well for you. So there has to be in-depth analysis when you want to get any application. And that is why I always say start small, like, you can do the templates like you guys. I just this. I just work. I'm just working on one thing, inventory template for someone. That's why that example came to me. You can have the templates. Continue running on it. Like use the templates for a while. Then you transition into the bigger application when the business is able to take on the cost. But then you don't want to take on the cost that you will not see the return on investment because if you take on that cost now and the only thing you need for that application at that time is just the inventory part, then you are not maximizing that application. You are not maximizing, maximizing the software because it's like someone that has a phone that has smartphones today. There are lots of things that we can do to you and we pay thousands of naira to get there. But at the end of the day, you see people, they can only make calls or take pictures on their phone. So please, if, you, if that's what you want to do, just go ahead and go and buy a 5,000 Naira phone and save your nice 5,000 Naira. So that's it. We have to look at the opportunity cost. We have to look at the functionalities that the bigger application, so to speak, are giving to us. Then is there a cheaper way of achieving that same thing? So we save on our cost. Um, I think any, everybody at Pemtra will agree that that last tip is our savior, our film show. You find the big apps 
and you figure out what those apps do and then work towards getting the same results without necessarily spending that money mm -hmm. and like Daya said excel is your friend google has google forms and so many other things honestly if you have a gmail account you have access to way so i can't many. even count how many apps that productivity so apps things. management apps just all you need mm -hmm. is your gmail and you have access to that um so i think that would answer the question about um what apps or what online programs can you do use your gmail use your apps um so i'm going to ask a question about ch change management because a lot of our smes are in the agri um, sector and manufacturing sector too and they rely on a seasonal workforce and have high employee turnover a big part of automation is for your workforce to be able to use it um, no matter what, for the people to be able to replicate the process, like you said. So what change management hacks do you have for business owners that rely on um, a workforce with high turnover? Okay, so the first thing about change management, the first thing that is very, very important when you are working with people is getting their buying. Like you don't just drop things on people. Even outside agriculture even outside manufacturing i've worked on processes like i've worked on automation process that you practically have to beg people to use it like after spending money and time on automation and they are not using they'll just drop your application for you and they'll just they'll continue whatever they were doing before so change the first thing is you create the awareness in them let them know that this there is a problem let them know that there is a problem. Like, make the problem real. This problem is here and we need to solve it. Then tell them, so we have identified this problem. This is how we want to solve it. How are we going to solve it? So there is a problem. They are aware that there is a problem. And you are telling them that this is a solution we think we have seen. So you want to create the desire in them. You want to tell them about it. You want to let them have the knowledge. Like they can even speak about those things when you are not there. You sell the idea to them that from the set go, they already sold into it. You already have their buy-in. Like they know everything about it, that they are champions. You know, at some point in my project, we started having champions in teams. We started having champions. Those are the ones that will be telling their team members, ah, this thing needs to work, it's all work, it's all work. So you want to make your employees, you want to make them champions of whatever you do. And this is not just about automation alone. Whatever we do as a business owner, you want to make your employees champions. Even your vision, you want them to be carriers of your vision. They need to be able to speak to your vision as much as you do. Then I have these other things I'd like to talk about when talking about people, because I know that one thing is that hiring right. So we always say that ah, you should hire right. You should hire people that the people are your best asset. Sincerely, people are not just your best asset, but the right people are your best asset. But then when you have the right people, you want them to be sold out to your vision. You want them to be sold out to your values. Then as a leader, you want to lead with questions, not answers. You don't just go, to, you don't just go into the office, oh, we are implementing this thing. Just look at it, oh, what, which one again? They are bringing something new again. But if you go like, so what do you think we can, how do you think we can solve this problem? They are coming with ideas. At the end of the day, you're able to, collect the ideas and come up with an action item you know what that does they own it like we came up with the idea ourselves so they own it as if like it, as if it's their baby they own it with their full chest and what happens when they own it like that it is a success even before you started it is a success because whatever is going to take to make it successful they're going to put it in then you want to do more of dialogue or than coercion, then you want to also give them an enabling environment to express themselves. So I've worked with someone that after, just, okay, go and research on this thing. They will go, sit on Google, do all sorts, come up with all sorts of things. Then after the meeting, after you have presented your case, now say, no, 
this is what we are going to do. You no, know, it got to at, it got to the same point that when he gives us any ideas, any assignments, like nobody works on it. Why? Because you know, that whatever you come up with, at the end of the day, it is what he has had in mind that we are still going to do. So please, why are we troubling ourselves? So you want it to be like a dialogue. You want them to have an opportunity to express themselves. Then you want to train. Training is also important too. And another thing with automation is there's always the learning curve. You don't deploy an automated process today and you expect your people to master it today. So there is always a learning curve. So business owners, you need to be aware that there is always a learning curve and you give them time. Then another thing is reward and recognition. You cannot overemphasize that. Reward and recognition. Like at the end of the day, what you want to do is they want, you want them to be able to see this business as their own. You want them to see it as their business because that is when you'll be able to get the best out of them. I think I'll add to what um, Daya just said is document everything you're doing when you are trying to improve your process even if you are not doing automation just document even if what you did today what you did differently today was to chat with someone instead of talk to them on the phone document how long it took what the difference in time was and things like that so please document whatever you're doing um, with process improvement so and i'm going to ask a final question to dial which is if there is one step you want business owners to take once they leave this webinar, what is it? Just one step that they one can step. take to improve their business. Identify the processes in your business first. When you identify the processes in your business, you identify the core ones, then you document them. So you actually answered your question earlier yourself, but I think that is that is like the foundation of everything. You identify the processes, like you have hundreds or 20 plus processes. You look at them, which ones are the core processes? Maybe like 10 of them are very core, then document them. Because it's even easier to, in fact, you have to document a process before you automate it. A process that is not documented, there's nothing to be improved. Because that means if you want to improve it, you have to call dial. What do you do? Then when I tell you what I do, you go to Sumbala, what do you do? Then you probably go to Indamola, what do you do? So there's no standard across board. So if there is anything I want people to do, if you don't have your processes identified, first and foremost, identify them, the main processes, document them. Then you can now go ahead to improving either by changing steps, by tweaking one or two things, or by going automation. Thank you very much. That was the perfect roundup to the questions for now. Um, like I said earlier, don't worry, we saw all your questions and you will get answers to those questions um, from us after this webinar. So, um, so since there are no more questions, I think I'll close the session off here. We haven't quite had time for some of the SMEs that we wanted to get to introduce themselves, but do not worry. You will all hear about every single one of the SMEs that were present today because we will be sending out that information about um, their cut with their with all of your contact details, uh, a little bit about your businesses, so that if you are interested in connecting with any of the businesses that were in this uh, clinic today or you know sort of reaching out to us you can do so via that directory um okay so that being said thank you so much for joining us today and engaging with our program i'd like to say a very very big thank you again to dio for coming to enlighten us today um if anyone would like to engage with her further then you can follow her on her linkedin and instagram we'll also be providing that information you can also follow fumi and pro mutual consulting on all of our platforms uh yes those are our details are coming up just now if you want to note them down but we won't be sending them again um you can follow us uh, on all our platforms to find out more about our services and to learn more about how you can join our bridge angels family um also be sure to continue the conversation with us we're actually live on facebook now but we will be posting this video to youtube again if you would like to share with your friends and family people that you feel need to hear this information um whose business whose businesses could really use this information knowledge is for sharing after all so um but to continue the conversation you can tweet us 
um, and follow our hashtags. That's hashtag grow with bridge angels, hashtag Q3BA SC and hashtag bridge angels SME clinic. We will be posting all of those as well. Um, so thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can always email us. Um, Simbola has posted our email address as well. And I guess I'll say good evening. Um, I hope everybody has a lovely evening. Thank you so much for joining us. And Dio, thank you again. Thank you so much.